Sorry mo, ikaw ako pala may kasalanan. Ika nga ni Taylor Swift, I'm the problem, it's me. Okay? Hey you, it's me, I'm the problem, it's me. Okay, so, bonus round tayo of histopathology. This is done on most samples. Okay? It's only done in bony samples. What else? Um, bony samples, teeth, okay? Anything with uh, fibrosis and calcifications. Okay? So we have to decalcify these samples before we do it. And from the name itself, we're removing, of course, calcium. Right? Okay. So this will take us like 15 minutes or, or so. So let's move on to the first slide. The first slide is what we will, I think, what we'll, another name for decalcification is. What do you call, uh, who can answer that question? Another name for decalcification. For decalcification. Marion, ay, up na ba, up na ba? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> mali yung pagkapasa ko. Sino yung nagtaas ang kamay? Hindi ko nakita. Sorry. Up na yata. Up na na, ma na Moyo. Ah, huh? talaga? Or are you really? Okay. Balik tayo sa first slide. Kung ganun. Okay, na pala. sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, so who uh, who raised their hand? Sorry, I didn't see another name for decalcification. Eh, Patrick, it's okay. All right, so it's very simple. Calcium is a mineral, so we want to remove it from the tissues because of certain reasons later on. Okay, but we need to know what organs first to demineralize or decalcify. So we have five samples. I think that's on the next slide. Okay, so we have five examples of tissues and organs that require us to decalcify it. Okay, five dapat siya, pero four lang nilagay ko. Um, dapat kasama dyan yung mga galing sa, ano, sa plastic surgery. Yung mga silicone na namuo. Okay? Kasi pag nag-leak out yon, okay, so pakita na natin yung lima. So, bone teeth, tuberculous lung tissue, atherosclerotic blood vessels. Tapos isama ninyo dyan, class. Hindi ko na idagdag kanina. Pakidagdag dyan, class. Um, leak, leak, uh, silicone leakage. Silicone leakage. Calcified silicone leakage. So, kasi kuma, luma, lumidikit yan sa balat ng kata, ay, sa laman loob ng tao. Tapos nagkakalcify siya. So, we have to decalcify yung mga deposits nun, okay? And see if how much the extent of the damage is, okay? So, yun, yung silicone leakage. Calcified silicone leakage. Okay? Yung mga nagpapa-plastic surgery, yung nagpapa-breast augmentation, yung mga nagpapalaki ng puwet, ganun. Okay? Alright. So, we go to the next slide. Um, why is decalcification done in calcium-rich tissues? Well, there are two things. The first reason is the microtome knife can't, uh, will be damaged uh, when you cut a sample that hasn't been decalcified. And second of all is that calcium, calcium deposits can obscure the cellular details of certain tissues, like bone material, for example. You'll see later, I'll have a picture for you guys to double check we have to note we have to also um, understand um, the next slide uh, we have to also understand the drawbacks of decalcifying tissue so we are adding an extra step to an already precious sample right so what is the extra uh, what is the drawback of using it so there's three things that you have to take into consideration one is that it can damage and distort tissue samples Okay, especially because you're using um, you're using acids. Second of all, is that uh, because you've decalcified a specific a certain sample, the weight of the sample um, disperses also as it gets dissolved. Okay, so the calcium ion sometimes bring um, causes the mass of a specific sample to be heavy. Once you've decalcified it, it will float off during staining. Okay, that's why it is important that we study decalcification also as histotechnologists. Okay, and it and lastly is the effects on staining. Okay, 
So because calcium uh, calcium is a positively charged ion, it will attract the negatively charged or acidic um, acidic stain, which is eosin, right? So if it stays there, the, the substance becomes acidophilic, okay? A basic rather, okay? Next. What causes distortions in the cell morphology of the calcified tissue? The acidic nature of the calcifying agents, okay? So it can, um, especially if it if the technologist is not careful, um, bone sa bone samples can be distorted. Okay, so care care must be taken into uh, account when you're especially when you're transferring it to a decalcifying agent to to the dehydrating agent. Okay, next, there are types of fixatives that should not be used when you are you when you are decalcifying a space a sample and this is these are the alcoholic fixatives alcohols slow down decalcification because they neutralize the whole solution okay alcohols have an have an have an a uh, um uh, alcohols have a hydroxyl group and the and they it, it binds to the it binds to the positively charged um, it binds to the positively charged nature of um, calcified samples, okay? So it takes a long time for the decalcifying agents to work, okay? Next, what are the effects of decalcification in staining? Basic dyes become inhibited. Uh, hematoxylin becomes neutralized. It becomes, uh, it, it becomes evident that the sample is... That the sample is acidic. Uh, that the sample remains acidic. Okay, so hindi ka kapit, hindi ka kapit yung hematoxylin, especially if you're using H and E preps. Acid dyes form precipitate, forming a brick red precipitate. You'll see later when I show you pictures of slides that haven't been adequately calcified, uh, decalcified. Eosin, eosin forms a precipitate. Okay, just so you know, guys. Okay, next. In order to prevent the effects of decalcification of the of the, sorry of decalcifying agents on stains, the technologist should avoid overtreatment of samples. So, it has to make you have you have to make sure you as technologists have to make sure that the decalcification process or the time for decalcification is just right. Okay. Why, sir? Akala ko ba automated siya? May mga machine, may mga, siyempre, isa, usually yung mga hospital, particularly si Patrick, nag-start out pa lang kami ng laboratory namin ni Patrick, di ba? Isa lang ang, ano namin, ang tissue processor namin. And therefore, after fixation, magdadagdag pa kami ng decalcification. So prone to error yun kung walang pumapansin ng mga samples na dinidecalcify din namin ni Patrick. For example, hinair namin si Mark Segi. Eh may katek si Mark Segi. Nakalimutan niya, buong araw sila nagte-text through Snapchat ni Mark Segi. Hindi ko alam kung Snapchat ang uso ngayon. Ha? So nakalimutan ni Mark Segi na during his shift na tanggalin yung ano, tanggalin sa decalcifying agent yung sample nila. Ay namin, ni Mark, ni Patrick. Okay? So pwede maya, it is prone to clerical error or technical error, kumbaga. Okay? So make sure that there is no overtreatment or overtreatment doesn't happen. Another thing that you have to remember is you have to wash out the sample properly. You have to remove the water. Or you have to remove the acid. Okay? Clear? Clear tayo doon? Okay, so very technical ang ano, decalcification. Next slide. We have to take into account factors affecting decalcification. And there are four factors that affect deca decalcification. I think that's the next slide. So there are four things that you have to take into con uh, to consideration or factors that affect the speed, the efficacy of the decalcification process. Okay? The volume, concentration, time, and temperature. So parang ano lang, parang familiar. Parang ano lang to, ha? fixation lang to kanina. Diba? Parang ganun nga. Tama tayo. Okay? The ideal ratio, ano yung sinabi ko sa inyo kanina? Tatandaan nyo lang na numbers. Nakalimu nalimutan nyo na? Anong 21? Hoy, isang buong statement yon kay ikaw talaga. Pero tama ka doon sa 20. Pero ano yung 1? 
Oh, yan yung kalokohan na yan, anak, ha? Anak. Lil Zo, what's our mnemonic for the numbers when we're talking about ratio, ratios? 20 is to 1. So, ano yung, ano yung, ano yung complete na mnemonic natin? Paulit-ulit natin sasabihin, class. 20 on everything except when infiltrating, di ba? 45... 45 kasi ang ratio ng infiltrating agent. Diba? 20 on everything except when infiltrating or impregnating. Okay? 20 is to 1. Yes, you guys are correct. So, lahat ng tatandaan, lahat ng tatandaan nyo, volume, pag usapan natin ng volume, 20 sa lahat except for infiltration. Bakit? Kasi 45 sa infiltration. Okay? Clear, 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 clear. Clear, Renmar? Okay. Very good. Alright. How much time is needed for decalcification? So if it's just a routine sample, it's 20 to 48 hours, two days maximum, okay? And for dense bones, it's going to take 14 days. It takes a lot of time, okay? All right. <coughs> Sir, bakit 14 days? Kaila, hindi naman tayo, huwag kayong mag-alala class. Very special cases lang yan. Mga, mga pasyente lang na mga may osteosarcoma yung ginagamitan natin ng ganyan. Yung talagang yung mga osteoblasts niya, malignant. Okay? Malignant talaga yung mga osteoblasts. Remember the um, the histology of bone samples? Diba? May, may canaliculi, yung mga ganarn. Nakalimutan nyo na yung mga bilog na drawing sa mga anatomy and physiology books ninyo. Diba in the middle of the, in between, naglalaban si, naglalaban si osteoblasts at si osteoclasts. Diba? So, patients with malignant osteosarcoma, mas abundant ang action ni osteoblasts. Okay? So, very rare lang naman tayo nakaka-receive ng ganyan because there's not a lot of cases of osteosarcoma. Okay? Cancer of the bones. Alright? Next. Nasaan na ba? May picture ako si Nend eh dati sa mga students ko yung pasyente na merong osteosarcoma. Send ko kay Moyo later tapos pakita ninyo. Pwede ba yon Moyo? Sa'yo ko send. Okay ta. Hansa, gusto ko sa ano, gusto ko sa chat. Ano ba 'yan mo nyo? <laughs> si Mark Seng. Mark Seng ba bagay sa ano, bagay yung ano. <laughs> Parang yung kay Patrick lang. Patrick pag ano nga, patingin nga. <laughs> yung kay Patrick. <laughs> okay. Ang gulo. <laughs> Puro kalokohan. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. What rule is usually followed when decalcifying tissues in relation to to the concentration of the calcifying agent. So, according to the BOC manual, ayun pa yan, quote-unquote to, this is, um, this is a, um, this is what you call this, um, a, an uh, excerpt, let's call it an excerpt from the BOC manual, a self, uh, a self-review guide by McFin, something, okay? Um, increasing the concentration also increases the speed of decalcification. Higher concentrations, however, risk damaging the integrity of tissues. Okay? So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Anak. Renmar anak. Anong ibig sabihin nun? <laughs> Chaling lang. Hindi na dyan ka lang anak. Chill ka lang dyan anak. Hindi kita pahirapan anak. So, what it just said, what it just says is that, um, the, um, the efficacy of decalcification, or sorry, the speed of decalcification is directly proportional to the concentration of the decalcifying agent, okay? Which is also directly proportional to tissue damage, okay? Ganun lang yun, okay? Clear? Clear ba tayo? Okay? So, pag 50% ang ginamit mo, which is very wrong, very wrong indeed yun, pag 50% ng acid ang ginamit mo, very wrong yun, Jeffrey Dahmer nagawain yun, guys, ha? <laughs> Walang gagawa ng ganun, guys. Paghihinalaan kayo ng mga pulis sa bahay ninyo. Pag 50% ang ginamit na. Jeffrey Dahmer yung nagawain. By the way, guys, ang ginaga ano ang ginagamit na acid ni Jeffrey Dahmer doon sa mga nanood ng Netflix na show? Ay, nakalimutan na nila. Di ba nilulublub niya yung mga buto ng rabbit? Kasi yung tatay niya, ano, yung tatay niya, chemist. Ano ginagamit niya na ano na acid doon which is the color of our ano of our slideshow kanina Ano acid 'yon It's capable of dissolving bone 
Hindi, masyadong HCL, uuso kang HCL pag concentrated. Hindi, sulfuric acid sobrang baho noon, hindi namatay na lahat ng mga ano, ng mga kapitbahay niya sobrang baho. Which ang sabi lang naman nung kapitbahay niya is amoy nabubulok na katawan, 'di ba? Amoy patay na daga. Anong gamit niya, Lil So? HCL na nga kanina, kakasabi lang. Chill ka lang, girl. <laughs> ano? Kulay orange siya, class. Kaya ngayon yung ginamit ko kanina na ano. Shello. Anong... Sinerge talaga. Sinerge yata talaga nila sa Google. Nitric acid, class. Sorry. Nitric acid ang ginamit niya. Okay? Kasi bakit, class? Madali lang siya makakuha. Yan yung mga sinabi ninyo... Hydrochloric acid, kailangan mo na lisensya niyan para makakuha. Kasi state mo kung bakit eh. ba? Diba? Kaya nga siya meron siyang ano, ba? Diba? Yung, yung nitric acid, madali lang kasi makakuha noon. Nung panahon na yun. Okay? Feeling ko dahil kay Jeffrey Dahmer kung bakit mahirap nang kumuha na din ng kahit anong acid na yun. Eh. Okay? Clear? Clear ba guys? Try, uh, let's move on to the next side. Hot or cold? Ayan na tayo. Because you're hot and you're cold, diba? you're yes and you're no. Okay, so what do you think happens to, uh, what will happen to the speed of decalcification if it's hot? So again, law of thermodynamics, it still follows the ter law of thermodynamics. The hotter the temperature, hotter temperatures accelerate the decalcification but risk damaging tissue integrity. And ano nga sabi ko kanina kapag ka ang tissue integrity is concerned tayo, ano ang... Um, maximum amount ng sample maximum amount natin ng work uh, ng tissue process natin dapat ilan dapat ang ano ilan dapat ang temperature natin in degree celsius it's 60 okay 60 degree celsius dapat 65 lang yun yung mga naglalaro-laro kanina yung special cases di ba 45 pagka electron microscopy yung mga ganun chill lang kayo mga alalahanin yun mga ang wag niyo alalahanin yung ano Iba. 60 lang yung analahan ninyo kasi most of the time yun yung tinatanong sa board. Okay? Alright? Yung 65 pang mga special cases yun. Okay? Let's move on to the next slide. What staining procedure is affected mostly by high temperatures when a sample is fixed, uh, when a sample has been decalcified? The Van Gason stain. Okay? It impairs the nuclear stain uh, specifically at 37 degrees Celsius. Okay? Next, <clears throat> complete digestion of tissues. Complete digestion of tissues is seen when samples submerged on a in a decalcifying dapat yan, in a decalcifying agent is set at what temperature? Greater than 50 degrees Celsius. Okay, so nada digest din yung tissues. Na itan yung class. The closer the closer we are to the threshold, the more likely you're going to destroy your sample. Okay. Next, optimal temperature range required for decalcification. Hindi natin siya minamadali. Okay? Lahat ng nasa histopat, hindi natin minamadali except yung mga ano, except yung mga katabing OR na mga procedures. Okay? So, 80 to 30 degrees Celsius lang tayo. Alright? So, we, follow, we only follow the 80 to 30 degrees Celsius. Right. Now, let's talk about the decalcification steps. There are steps to follow. Okay. All right. So there are three things that you need, you must remember. Okay. You have to measure the amount of decalcifying agent versus the amount of sample, or sorry, the amount of sample versus the amount of decalcifying agent. You have to suspend the sample at the center of the solution. Bakit? Ano nga sabi ko kanina? Kasi lumalambot ang sample kasi na nawawala yung calcium, di ba? Tapos gumagaan, di ba? So kailangan nakasuspend siya. Okay? So makikita ninyo pag pag ano pag nasa sa laboratory kayo na nagpo-perform ng decalcification, binabalot siya sa gauze, yung yung buto, binabalot sa gauze. Tapos ilalagay yung gauze na yun sa ano, may pabigat 'yun. Parang ano, parang parang pag nag-diving ka, 'di ba? Pag iaangkor mo yung yung ano mo, yung barko mo, 'di ba? May mga ano 'yon. May parang hook siya sa ibaba. Parang ganon, parang may anchor siya. Okay? 
and then you wash off the decalcifying agent 20 to 48 hours after uh, for 20 to 48 hours ano yung wash off sir huhugasan ko as in kukuskusin ko sir ganon hindi chill lang kayo magano lang kayo magkukuha lang kayo ng tap water or any de- or uh, any decalcifying agent removal um sam- kasi iba-iba yung process ng pagwash off ng decalcifying agent um most commonly if it's nitric acid what you're going to do is you're just going to submerge it in tap water okay submerge mo sa tap water then after several hours pag pagbalik mo ng duty mo pagbalik na for example nag rotate ka nag rotate na kami si Patrick na papalit sa akin do sa lab namin papalitan niya yung water papalitan lang niya yung water and then ililipat niya kay ano papasa natin kay Mark Segi di ba kasi siya yung night shift di ba <laughs> talaga nagtatayo na tayo ng laboratory no kanina kadaver si ano kanina kadaver natin si Patrick tapos ngayon ano na siya <laughs> ka shift ko na <laughs> okay so ganon class okay so kaya nga sabi ko kanina sa inyo kapag ka may ano kayo may isa lang ang machine sa laboratory most probably yung medtech kailangan tatandaan niya dapat or dapat may checklist dapat sila kung ano yung mga ginagawa sa isang sa buong araw kasi ba, prone to error talaga siya okay lalo na to 20 to 48 hours paano for example ay eh, nag vacation leave siya nag vacation leave ako inendorse ko naman kaso si Patrick napasaya sa Christmas party nakalimutan niyang ilipat so inabot na bul- na dissolve na yung sample pagtingin na pagtingin na pag process ni Patrick sa microscope sa sa pag da, paggawa niya talaga ng FD seat niya wala nang sample <laughs> pagdating niya ng mga ano na lang outline na lang ng cells ang nakikita niya wala na yung nucleus at saka ano okay so dapat pag kakalimutan ang decalcifica- decalcification agent saka dapat ano siya tinatandaan na may checklist dapat at saka dapat ang endorsement ay hindi hindi lang written dapat naka-verbal din at saka paulit-ulit dapat okay Next. Why is it important to wrap the sample in gauze and suspend the sample at the center of the solution of uh, in the center of solution instead of just letting it rest at the bottom of the container to allow uniform formation uh, that is to allow the uniform penetration of the calcifying agents. Okay? So kasi pag may nadagaanan na part, hindi pa baka hindi pasukin nang the calcifying agent. Okay? So dapat ano, dapat lumulutang-lutang lang din siya. Okay? All right. Now We're going to talk about a specific decalcifying agents. Okay? So, isa-isahin natin siya. So, there are four types of reagents that we have to remember. Okay? Um, reagents and uh, and process dapat siya, actually. Reagents and processes. Um, one is acid. The second one is chelating agents. The other one is ion exchange resin. And the other, the last one is elect- ion, ec- ion, electrical ionization. Okay? So, ano yung electrical ionization na yan, sir? Mamaya, pag-usapan natin yan. Acids muna tayo. Ito na yan. Jeffrey Dahmer na tayo. Okay? Jeffrey Dahmer tayo. So, na- the first one is sulfurous acid, not sulfuric acid, sulfurous. Okay? Sir, the second one is nitric acid, formic acid, <coughs> TCA. Si- mamaya, itatanong ko kasi sa inyo kung ano yung TCA. Okay? Um, citric acid, chromic acid, and nitric acid. Bakit dalawa yung nitric acid? Pakialis yung extra nitric acid. <laughs> Nitro, nitrous acid dapat yan. <laughs> Alright. Next. Let's move on to the chelating agent. So the chelating agent um, uh, that we usually use is what? Pag narinig yung chelating agent na yan, ano ba yung chelating agent na yan? Chelating agent. Ano ba yung lagi nating naririnig na yan? Sa coagulation, meron tayong naririnig na chelating agent. Sa plebotomy, naririnig din natin yan. What is that chelating agent that we use as a decalcifying agent? Shira. Paulit-ulit na yan. Oh, taray. Ano yung EDTA? Pakitranscribe nga. <laughs> Graphic ka, sir. Mahilig ka bang challenge? <laughs> Ah, ethylene diamine, tetraacetic acid. Hoy, kayo talaga mga mente, kayo nakakahiya pag tinanong kayo ng mga colleagues ninyo sa ibang sa ibang school or sa ibang ano ha, sa ibang bansa ha. Okay? All right. So EDTA, pag pina-transcribe ko kay Shaira, grabe ka naman sir, mang challenge. 
Huwag ganun. Okay, so EDTA is the correct answer. Alright, let's move on to the next slide. Ion exchange resin can be used... Uh, sorry, ion exchange resin that can be used as a decalcifying agent. Ito yung parang mga cases na maliliit na tumutubo tapos nilalagay natin sa, sa bulak. Patrick, I think naaalala mo pa yan. Kasi ikaw lang yung nagsagot ng dati eh. Nung panahon natin, Patrick. <laughs> Naabutan mo pa, Patrick. Kinder ka, tapos grade 6 na ako, Patrick. <laughs> okay. So, ang tawag dyan is ammonium polystyrene resins. Okay. These are ammonium polystyrene resins. So, para maliliit lang yung nabilog ng kulay orange. Okay. Um, next. Using electrical ionization, how are tissue samples decalcified? Nako, ito na. Uh, electrical ionization. So, def definitely has something to do with separation of positive and negatively charged ions, di ba? So, ano ba ang, ano ba ang pinag-usapan natin? From immunology to hematology, paulit-ulit kong sinasabi, we're using electric, when we talk about electricity, or adding an electrical uh, an electrical field to a to a solution we separate stuff right and what is that methodology that we use arian ay vonga vonga o sige cha challenge din kita katulad ni Shaira saan ang cathode saan ang anode positive or negative <laughs> May shortcut tayo last time, di ba? Pag cathode, may cross siya. So, ibig sabihin yung negatively charged na ano siya. Di ba? Carry lang, Lilzo. Ch chill ka lang dyan, Lilzo. <laughs> I-explain ko sa inyo yung shortcut. Kasi di ba yung cathode T, meron siyang positive sa... Meron siyang ano, di ba? Meron siyang... Meron siyang sign. Lahat ng positively charged ions pupunta sa kanya kasi negatively charged electrode siya. Okay, yun lang tatandaan nyo, kabaliktaran siya kasi may T. So, si anode, huwag nyo nang pansinin. Okay? Kasi ibig sabihin nun, opposite lang ang isipin ninyo. Okay? Isa lang tandaan nyo, mahirap. Daig ng wais ang matalino, di ba? Hindi nyo kailangan memorize. Kung yung, ang opposite naman, magka-opposite naman siya, di ba? Di ba, class? Huwag masyadong pahirapan ang sarili. Ha? Ang dami-dami nyo nang numbers na may memorize in class, eh. Nila, pinaglalagay ko lahat yun dun sa examen nyo para maluka kayo lahat. <laughs> yung mga number alam ko alam ko may stress kayo dun eh kaya pinaglalagay ko lahat ng mga numbers dun sa mga previous lectures natin class alam niyo yarn <laughs> okay pero wag kayo mag-alala hindi ko tatanong flat out kung anong number yon okay all right so well, ito na okay Cal electrophoresis calcium ions move to the cathode the negatively charged electrode okay so tandaan niyo lang yung t na yan no di ba may t siya pag may t Positively charged, lalapit ang mga positively charged dito. Kasi negatively charged siya. Okay? Ganon. Yun yung ano nyo, yun yung lagi nyo iisipin. Okay? So si anode, since siya ang positively charged, sa kanya lalapit yung negatively charged ay, uh, siya lala, sa kanya lalapit yung mga negatively charged. Okay? Clear? So hindi nyo na kailangan tandaan yung anode, cathode lang. Diba? So, daig ng Y, sa matalino. Alright? Next. Alright, which type of decalcifying agent is most commonly used in most histopathology laboratories? Acids. The reason being is that it's cheap and it's readily available. Kasi nga si Jeffrey Dahmer nga, nakakuha, naka-avail, di ba? Nakapagpa-deliver through Lazada. Paano pa kaya tayo, di ba? Try nyo nga i-search ngayon. Um, nasa na si Segi? Try nyo nga i-search ngayon kung pwede kayo makabili ng nitric acid sa ano? Sa Lazada. I, pra, I swear, makaka-order kayo. Diyan sa Pilipinas. Okay? Next. Okay? Nag-search kayo. Patingin nga kung totoo ang aking ano. Kasi yung totoo, Arian, tumatango si Arian eh. Nitric acid or kahit ano, hydrochloric acid. Try nyo nga. Pwede. Pwede maka-order sa Lazada. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dito kailangan mo pa ng reason kung bakit. As in pure stock solution siya. Moyo, try mo nga. Tapos pakita mo sa class. Kung pwedeng mag-order. 
I just wanted to see. I, kasi sabi nila mat- madali lang daw kumuha diyan sa Pilipinas eh. Try mo nga search ka sa Lazada or sa ano pa yung isa Shopee kung pwede kang mag-order ng ano. Acids. Readily available and ano. Kasi si Gregorius yung gumawa eh. May, may annotation si Gregorius in the Philippines ano in the Philippines you can easily buy this of the of the of any manufacturer playing for men Ngayon may sinend sa akin si ano Oh pwede nga oh 'di ba class 4 gallons 1700 lang oh Ang galing, di ba? Kita nyo, kaya, kaya talaga important si ano. Kaya important talaga ang, ang, ang tag doon, chemical, ano, chemical control. Alright. Let's talk about the ano naman. Most common and the fastest acids used for decalcification. Fastest acids for decalcification. Tayo. Okay, so... The fastest acid for decalcification is nitric acid, obviously. And there are other there are formulations that you must remember. Okay? Tanda lagyan niyo na ng ano, lagyan niyo na ng bilog si Perennius fluid mamaya mamaya natin mamaya ko sa i ano sa inyo, i-discuss sa inyo. Pero um, these are the formulations, okay? 5 to 10% nitric acid, the other one is formal, formal nitric acid, um Perennius fluid Pere, sorry, perennial fluid, 10% aqueous nitric acid, fluoroglucine nitric acid, and decastrose fluid. Okay? So, let's talk about 10, 5-10% to 10% nitric acid first. Okay? 5-10% to 10% nitric acid is um, has these advantages. Um, I think that's on the next slide. Yeah. Okay. So, it can result to poor staining and it has it imparts a yellow discoloration to the sample. Okay, yellowish to orange actually. I've seen this firsthand when I was working in Saudi Arabia and it was such a pain in the blank. Okay, it was such a pain. Kasi na- nabubuisit ako kasi ilang beses namin binabalikan yung isang sample dahil lang doon. Alright, and napakatagal pa niya. Imagine niyo kung na- nalukot na parang pang- pambalot na ng tinapay yung request ng pasyente. Hindi pa din namin nare-release yung result. Kasi ilang beses namin binabalik-balikan yung sample. Makakabuisit yung ano na yan, yung yellow discoloration na yan. Okay? Kasi katulad nga ninyo, pwede din kami makabili ng nitric acid sa Lazada. <laughs> sa Lazada namin. Sa Lazada namin doon sa Saudi. Okay? Hindi talaga ganoon ka ano, hindi talaga ganoon kadali i-control. So, pag may naturik sa inyo, may nasiraan ng may nasiraan ng bait, 'di ba? Pwede ding maging serial killer and then ilagay sa ano sa sa batya na puno ng nitric acid yung ano yung lamang loob at yung pasyente ay yung patient so para hindi naman tinawag ko pa rin patient naman in fairness di ba anyways enough morbidity Mor- ang morbid ng mga jokes ko eh let's move on to something much more fun which is the advantages of using formal nitric acid okay um my advantages is that it ha- it causes less tissue destruction because it is half formalin Okay, it's rapid acting at produces um, better um, nuclear staining. And because it has formalin, the color is slightly removed, okay? Or can be removed. The, the, the yellow discoloration can be removed, okay? Because it's diluted with formalin, all right? Next, when using formal nitric acid, what solution can be best used to lessen the yellowish discoloration? You either add 0.1% urea or... 5% sodium sulfate. Okay? So, there are only two things. Okay? And will it will it affect our sample? No, it won't. Don't worry, class. Okay? Ang dinidikitan lang niya is yung yellow, uh, yellowish color niya. Parang bleaching agent siya. Okay? Next. Next class. This is a slow nitric acid-based tissue decalcifying agent that functions also as a tissue softener. Yan yung tatandaan nyo, class. Kasi mamaya, babalikan natin yung perennial fluid, perennial fluid na yan, class. When we go to tissue softeners. Okay? Perennial fluid, class. Okay? Huwag kakalimutan si perennial fluid. Next. The main, dis- the main advantage of using 10% aqueous nitric, a- nitric acid is that it is uh, it's rapid because it's 
uh, its decalcifying speed is at about 12 to 24 hours, okay? Instead of the, no the, no the normal 48, uh, 24 to 48 hours with minimal tissue distortion. Yun yung ano niya, okay? Pero kailangan nyo siyang gawin, okay? Kailangan nyo siyang gawin. Kasi aqueous, ano siya eh, from powdered nitric acid, you dilute it with with water and of course water and acids don't mix so medyo matagal-tagal siyang gawin okay next um the gastrous fluid is important in impregnating what cells or tissues with silver nerve fibers okay nerve fibers so dinidi decalcify din natin yung ano dinidi decalcify din natin yung yung nerve fibers of course kasi meron tayong tinatawag na sakit na nagko-cause ng, ng calcifying formation ng nerve fibers. Ano sa tingin nyo yun? Yung nagpo-form ng plaques sa nerve fibers, specifically sa brain, anong sakit yun? Very common yun, class. Plaque formation sa mga nerve fibers. Nagko-cause siya ng, ano, very common sa mga matatanda. Renmar. Very good. Mali lang ang pronunciation, pero tama. Tama naman ang sagot ng aking anak. Alzheimer's. Dapat Alzheimer's. Gaarte kasi talaga nila. Naiinis ako sa kanila dito. <laughs> My mother has Alzheimer's. Nanood kasi ako ng Grey's Anatomy. Hindi pala siya Alzheimer. Di ba natin sa Pilipinas, Alzheimer? Talk to me in your, in your sexy Filipino accent. Alzheimer, diabetes, ganun. Ganun yung basa natin, di ba? Sa kanila, Alzheimer's. Ang arte, nakakainis. So, it's Alzheimer's kasi it process, it causes um, tissue, uh, uh, not tissue, nerve fiber plaque formation. Okay? So, pag nag-binayopsy sila, para sabihin ni doktor, medyo matigas to, pwedeng pakidecalcify. Okay? And we, and of course, there is a different staining technique when you use, when you, taray, Ellis Gray. Ay, nanonood talaga siya. <laughs> Winner. Winner talaga. O, oh, hindi lang si Win, hindi lang si Ellis Gray. My goodness. Season 7, si Adele ano din? Si Adele din. Diba? Si Adele Weber, nagkaroon din yun ng Alzheimer's. O, oh, diba? Kala mo ha, nanonood ako niyan. Gusto ko kasi dati maging manggagamot eh. Alright? Alright, let's move on. Girl, naku, naku si James. Si James, wala kala ko ba may girlfriend ka? Bakit makdreamy ang mga pinagsasabi mo dyan? Ano ba yan? Huwag ganon. Dito pa sa live stream natin na ano, dito pa sa, sa lecture natin na nila live stream ko, huwag ganon na malalaman ng mga tao, pati sa Zimbabwe, malalaman nila na Becky Bam Bam ka, tumigil ka dyan ha, <laughs> makdreamy, pero makdreamy talaga si Patrick Dempsey class. Anyways, dinistract nyo na ako sa aking actual na trabaho, balik na tayo sa pagtuturo ko class. Alright, all nitric acid formulations can be washed off with water except for one. Ano yun? Yun na nga yun, yung last natin. Fluoroglucine nitric acid. And you have to wash it with three changes of ethanol. Teka lang sir, parang familiar sa akin yung three changes of ethanol na yan. Ano yan? Anong tawag dyan sa step na yan? Parang familiar sa akin yan. Ano yan tawag dyan sa step na yan? Why? FDC. Ano yung D? Hindi yung decalcification na. Sasampalin ko kayo. <laughs> Hindi yung decalcification. Ano yung D? Raise your hand. Ano yung, FDC? Ano yung D sa FDC? Bo Tandaan nyo, bonus round lang tong decalcification. <laughs> Mark Segi. Dehydration. Mark Segi, naririnig na kita. Ano ba? <laughs> naririnig na kita. <laughs> May battery na yung headset ko. May battery na headset ko. Ano ba? Go na tayo next. Okay? So, three changes of ethanol. That is actually dehydration. So, rekta na siya pag ginamit mo, pag ginamit mo yung fluoroglucine nitric acid. Okay? Rektahan na siya, class. Okay? Yun yung maganda sa kanya. Okay? The best general fixative decalcifying agent is 5% formic acid nga lang. Okay? 5% formic acid. How long are samples treated with formic acid? 2 to 7 days. Nyek. Akala ko ba, sir, WSF? Eh, syempre, fixative na nga siya. Syempre, may downside din siya. Wala namang perfect na reagent class, ba? So, ang downside niya is 2 to 7 days yung treatment sa kanya. 
ngek. Pwede naman siyang fix sa team pero pwede nga siyang fix sa team pero 2 to 7 days nga lang. Kung hindi ka nagmamadali, pwede mo siyang gamitin. Alright, next. Let's move on to the next acid in our discussion and this is uh, hydrochloric acid which can be used as a decalcifying agent. Okay? However, there are some disadvantages. Okay? One one notable um, notable disadvantage of the using hydrochloric acid is that it causes greater tissue distortion. Mas matapang siya eh. Diba? Yung 100, yung hindi nga yan masyado binibenta ng 100% or pure proof eh. Kasi, umuusok ka yan. Mahanginan lang yan, umuusok na kagad yan eh. Okay? Okay. And it's slow acting. Yun yung reason kung bakit very rarely kayo nakakakita ng mga labs na nag nagagamit niyan. Okay? Now, the formulation for the decalcifying fluid is known as von Ebner's fluid. And the main ad advantage of this one is that um, it has an advantage over HCL just normal HCL as it is, a, it is as it is good for cytologic stains. Mas pabili, mas madaling kumapit yung mga cytologic stains natin. Yun yung ano niya, yun yung advantage niya. Okay? Now, let's move on to chelating agents which is I think the next one. So wag niyo kakalimutan si Perenius fluid. Haba balikan natin yan paulit-ulit ha. All right? Lumalabas yung uh, ilongga accent ko kahit hindi naman ako ilongga. Okay? Anyways, Chelating agent. Let's talk about chelating agents. Okay. When we talk about chelating agents, kakatanong ko lang kanina, what form of EDTA is often used in histopathology laboratories? Sodium ba or potassium EDTA? Yan lang yung tanong doon. Ano yung ginagamit sa, ano, sa, la, sa phlebotomy? Sodium or potassium? Nako. Hindi nila tiningnan yung purple top nila. Nakasulat pa naman doon. Ano yung ginagamit? Mga nag-intern. Kahit a day in the life of mom yan, nakakita ako ng isa sa mga videos. Pinakita yun, pinakita yun ng isang nag, uh, ano, nag-flebo. Arian. Pwede, yes. Pwede. Sodium EDTA, pwede din potassium EDTA. Okay? Both. It's a trick question class. Kayo talaga, kinabahan naman. Biglang nagsitahimik, ah. Nagtahimik, biglang tumahimik ang mundo <laughs> ng klase ni Sir Marco. <laughs> biglang daw eh, nagtinginan sila. Nak Nakita ko yung reaction ni Lilzo, umatras siya ng konti. Tapos si Arian, gumano ng konti. Nag-isip ng, ano, nag ng malala. Biglang tumigil ang mundo nila nung tinanong yung EDTA. <laughs> okay, so for decalcifying agent, as a decalcifying agent, the, um, we use disodium EDTA. Okay, disodium EDTA. Ano yung EDTA nga ulit? Ethylene, diamine, tetraacetic acid. Huwag na huwag nyo kakalimutan yung class. Kasi flebotomy ang bread and butter natin as medtech sa Pilipinas, di ba? Okay, next. Huwag kayong gagaya dito sa mga estudyante namin dito sa US. Hindi nila alam kung paano kumuha yung proper draw. Hindi nila alam yung proper draw. Collection. Yung blood culture, last na kukunin. Tama ba yun? <laughs> Charet. Okay, enough na. Let's move on to the next one. EDTA is the best decalcifying agent for what type of histopathologic procedures? Obviously, those that require what? That require proteins, specifically the antigens, to be present. Okay? So, hindi dapat nasisira yung antigens. So, obviously, immunohistochemistry and enzyme studies tayo. Okay? Immunohistochemistry or enzyme studies. Pag sinabi kong enzyme studies, huwag nyo nakalimutan si per periodic shift. Okay? PAS. Okay? Huwag na huwag nyo kakalimutan si PAS. Ilang beses nyo din yan makikita dun sa mga notes ninyo sa staining. Okay? Next. EDTA acts as a decalcifying agent and a tissue softener. Okay? So, dalawa siya, double ano siya, double, double function siya. So, decalcifying agent na siya, tapos pare, ano pa siya? Tissue softener pa siya. Okay? Next. Advantages of using EDTA. It doesn't interfere with staining such as immunohistochemistry and enzyme stains as well as cytological, cytologic enzyme stains and it does not distort tissue and enzymes. Okay? So, ito nyo, napakaganda ng EDTA for, um, yeah, for immunohistochemistry. 
okay, which is a separate part of our um, histology laboratory. I didn't know that there I didn't know that there are separate labs kasi kasi yung nakasanayan kong histopat na laboratory. Isang malaking kwarto lang doon na lahat ginagawa, 'di ba? Ano, Mark Segi, parang office lang ang histopat lab, 'di ba? Tapos sa kabilang side ay sa kabilang kwarto, nandoon nagbabasa yung mga doktor. Minsan nga mahirap pa, mahirap ang buhay sa mahirap na mahirap ang buhay sa Pilipinas kung saan sila naggo-gross, doon din sila nagtitingin sa microscope. 'Di ba? Ganon. So yon. Okay? Next. <clears throat> Duration of decalcifying samples in EDTA. So for small specimens and large specimens, there's a different uh, there's a different duration. So for small specimens, you submerge it in 1 to 3 1 to 3 weeks. For large and dense, it's 6 to 8 weeks. So nakita niyo ang difference class kaya lagi tayong nag-acid. Okay? Kaya tayo lagi nag-acid. Alright, next. Ideal pH range of EDTA for decalcification process. Ideally, it's supposed to stay at 7.0 to 7.4. Neutral to basic. Okay, neutral to basic. Slightly basic. And then, we're going to talk about ion exchange resins. Ayan na. Para siyang sago. Okay, or kisses. Ganyan yung itsura niya, class. Tapos, nakalagay lang yan sa maliit na parang cup ng urine. Okay? Nakalagay yan sa parang cup ng urine. And then, dyan, i, parang ita, ilulubog mo lang dyan yung ano. Parang, parang ano lang siya. Uh, na, parang, for example, tumalun si Mark Segi sa, alam mo yung ball pit. Dyan sa, hindi ko alam. Ano ba yung mga, dyan sa McDo or sa, ano, imagine niyo si Segi, ay si Patrick pala yung ano natin, yung cadaver natin. Parang for example, gusto nating i-decalcify yung ano, yung mga buto ni Patrick. Iba to lang natin si Patrick sa ball pit sa, ng McDo. Tapos imagine natin, ayon ex exchange resin yun. Meron pa ba mga ganun? May mga playroom pa ba sa McDo diyan? Meron pa de ba? May mga ball pit pa rin. Parang ganun lang yung ano niya. So hindi siya basa, class. Okay? Parang ano lang siya. Um, bola lang siya na nag doon lang nagpapalitan through I don't know it if it's through osmosis but it exchange there is an exchange of um of calcium ions okay now next slide <clears throat> what type of resin is commonly used in decalcifying tissues so sinabi ko na kanina ammonium sulfonated polystyrene okay and usually we add formic acid in this case okay so sira kala ko ba ano lang Siyempre, para mamasama sa siya, siyempre, para, para mag-transfer yung, ano, yung, yung ions, di ba? Hindi naman pwede, parang tuyo lang siya. Okay? So, babasa-basa mo siya ng formic acid. Okay? Next. What is the major disadvantage of using resin as a decalcifying agent? The main disadvantage, uh, the main advantage of that one, the major advantage of that one is that it's reusable class. Reusable sa class. Kasi, ang gagawin mo lang, kukunin mo yung, kukunin mo yung tissue, tapos, ano, maglubog ka lang ulit ng bago mong sample. Diba? Ganun lang siya. Kasi saan ba napupunta yung calcium? Napupunta naman dun sa mga bilog eh. Hindi naman siya nagpo-float dun sa solution. Kasi wala naman solution, ba? Ang solution mo is, what? Formic acid. Pero yung formic acid, hindi naman naiiwan doon yung calcium doon sa previous sample mo. Kaya siya reusable. Okay? Alright, let's move on to the next one. What is the principle of ion exchange in decalcifying the sample? So, the dissolution of, uh, it's based on the principle of the dissolution of calcium ions facilitated by soaking a sample in um, formic acid and then subsequent exchange of ammonium ions from the resin <coughs> from the polystyrene uh, from the resin in the polystyrene resin uh, sorry to the polystyrene resin so magpapalipalitan lang sila niyan okay now we move on to the next one how long does it take to decalcify tissues with ion exchange resins mabibilib kayo class if the sample is around 2 to 3 millimeters lang ang size kasi laki lang siguro ng kuko ko sa hinliliit sa paa okay you only it will only take about 2 to 3 hours diba that's the main that's the main advantage of ion exchange resin 
okay? Two to three hours. Now, let's move on to electrical ionization. So electrical ionization, as mentioned by one of your classmates earlier, we use electrophoresis, okay, to separate the calcium, okay? So electrical ionization of tissues to decalcify specimens um, is done through what methodology? Electrophoresis. I mean, we've already answered that one. And I think uh, there is a review question um, on the next slide. Oh, yeah. Where do calcium ions move when separated by electrophoresis in an electrical field around the tissue? It, I, it moves where? Cathode or anode? Alam ko pa ulit ulit. Pero, alam nyo naman kayo, five, 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 kakasabi ko lang, bigla nakakalimutan. Arian. Okay, bakit? Ano ba si cathode? Ulit. Challenge ka na naman. Grabe ka talaga, sir. Lagi ka na challenge Ano ba si cathode? Positive or negatively charged? Very good. O, di ba? O, di ba? Tari, parang nagulat din siya sa sarili niya. Pero in fairness, confident siya, di ba? Nakita niyo, confidently beautiful with the heart. Di ba, Renmar? Kita mo. Confidently beautiful with the heart. Ayan na yung mnemonic ko sa inyo, class. Oh. Remember that T is cathode. Okay? Sorry, remember that T in cathode, dapat yan. In cathode, looks like a plus sign. Therefore, positive ions move to it because it's negatively charged. O, diba? Yun lang yung tatandaan nyo. Yung T, mukhang positive sign, diba? Or plus sign. Okay? So, doon nagpupuntahan yung positive ions. Okay? Kasi ang... Ano ba ang ginagawa natin pag nag-electrophoresis tayo? Pinamo-move natin yung mga ions, di ba? Pinagagalaw natin sila, class. One hour na lang pala tayo, class. Naku, my goodness. Hindi talaga natin siya matatapos today. Nag nag As a Christmas gift for you guys, na late ako ng one hour, tapos maaga din tayong aalis, di ba? Christmas na, Christmas na Christmas. Pero, pero come January, lagot kayo sa akin. <laughs> lagot kayo sa akin kasi ako ang pabubulain ng bunga nga. Alam niyo bakit? Nakita ko lang sa schedule na binigay sa akin ni Sir Marco. Ako magbibigay ng rational doon sa mga exam. And madaming mga tanungan tayo dyan, class. Lagi ko kayong i-challenge, class. <laughs> Nakita niyo, pag-challenge ko sa kay Shira kanina, di ba? Si Shira. EDTA, sir. Ano yung EDTA? <laughs> di ba? Nakakaloka. Parang kay Arian kanina. Ano yung ano? <laughs> okay. Next sa tayo. What is the main disadvantage of electrophoresis, of using electrophoresis to decalcify tissues? Obviously, since you're using, since you're only using a, you're using a machine, and you're only processing one sample, kasi yun lang ang alatib niya, one at a time lang. Tama? Patingin? Oh, di ba? One tissue at a time. Isa-isa lang. Kailangan kayo magsipila. May sad face nga, oh. Nilagay ko ng sad face. Maganda sana siya. Mabilis sana siya. Mga around 15 minutes lang madidecalcify mo na yung tissue. Pero, isa-isa lang. Eh, di na toxic ka lalo. <laughs> di ba? Paano kung ano siya? Paano kung isang buong part na, isang pasyente na tinitest lahat ay, eh, ano, lahat ng tissues niya, lahat ng, mukha may mga butlig na possible osteosarcoma. Di ba? Eh, yung osteosarcoma, mabilis kumalat class, di ba? Alright, so let's talk about the next uh, slide which is the electrolyte medium prepared when decalcifying specimens. So, papakita ko sa inyo yung HCl bath niya and formic acid bath. Ayan na class. Pakita mo nga mo yun. Ayan. So, ang media is uh, HCl and formic acid and ganyan na ganyan ang itsura niya. So, nakita niyo yan nakasubmerge siya dyan sa cassette. Ay, yung cassette nakasubmerge dyan. Then when you apply electricity, um, there is acid on the anode. There is acid in the solution. There's a cathode and an anode, and we place the specimen there, and it literally rips off the calcium from the sample. Okay, because you've added HCl or hydrochloric acid and formic acid. Okay, so may electrophoretic tank tayo. Sir, eh, pa, eh, pwede naman pala namin ilagay jaan, madaming sample. Eh di sumabog naman yung ano ninyo, di ba? Kasi sobrang dami naman ng calcium ions. Kaya one at a time lang. Chill lang kayo, class. 
Pag binigyan kayo ng privilege na gamitin yan, huwag rin na mga abusuhin, class. Okay? Pag binigyan kayo ng privilege na, ay, sosyal, gagamit na kami ng electrophoresis. Tapos nilagay mo lahat ng tissue mo doon, no? sumabog kayo. <laughs> Lalo nagkaroon ng, ano, ng, ng calcium overload yung, ano, yung machine. Or na short, na short circuit yung, ano, yung, yung electrophoretic tank mo. Okay? Now, babalik tayo sa tissue softeners. Di ba sabi ko ko sa inyo kanina tandaan nyo si perennial perennial fluid class, di ba? Kasi tissue softeners na yung next na topic. O yan. Orange na orange, nag-orange yung mukha ni ano eh, ni Lil Zoe. Eh. <laughs> nag-orange yung mukha ni Lil Zoe. Eh. Orange na orange eh. Okay. Kitang-kita ko sa noon ni Sege at ni ano eh, ni, ni Shaira eh. <laughs> Ay ni ano ni Arian eh. Kitang-kita ko eh. Okay, let's go to the next uh, the next slide. We have to know what the purpose of tissue softeners are. So, the purpose of that one is to soften the tissue blocks. Okay, so it softens the tissue blocks. So, ibig sabihin, sir, nakaparafinized na siya. Yes, nakaparafin na siya. Or embedded na siya sa paraffin. Okay? So, ang ginagawa mo niyan, exposed na siya. Di ba may tinatawag tayong trimming procedure? Yung trimming procedure is yung ini-expose mo yung tissue doon sa tissue block. So, pagka maganit pa rin and para nag- nagiging muka, nagmumukhang ano, nagmumukhang ano ba yung ano, magandang itch, magandang comparison niya. Parang mukha siyang chicharon. Pagka i-move mo yung ano, mag pag move mo yung usually diyan sa Pilipinas rotary microtome tayo diyan, 'di ba? Yung iniikot pa rin yung wheel. 'Di ba? pag ikot mo doon sa ano tas pag pagbaba ng tissue block doon sa blade para kang guma para ang texture niya is parang chicharon na makunat okay ang gagawin mo sa kanya is dadampian mo siya ng tissue softener okay dadampian mo siya ng tissue softener it's either you put it in gauze or tissue literally tissue softener <laughs> ilalagay mo siya sa tissue or whatever what else okay so ganun Parang papahiran mo siya ng papahiran mo siya ng tissue softeners. Okay? Or much better, ilublub mo yung portion na exposed yung paraffin. Ay exposed yung tissue. Okay? Um, we had a sample like that when I was working in Saudi Arabia. Natatawa ako kasi para siyang ano, parang pulburon. Pag ano niya, pa every time na tinatamaan yung sample ng ng ano, ng blade, parang pulburon. Tapos muntik pa akong mabulag class. Kasi yung needle, ay yung knife, naba, na, nabitak. Tumalsik sa mukha ko. Nasugat yung mukha ko nung ano. Kaya kailangan talaga dinidecalcify yung samples class ha. Huwag kayong gagaya sa amin. Tsaka, sa amin ha. Kasi wala kami decalcification doon. Okay? Now, let's move on to the next um, uh, next slide. Which is tissue softeners. So there are tissue softeners used in histopathology. And, uh, there, there are five tissue softeners in histopathology. Um, we use perennial perennial fluid, aqueous phenol, moliflex, 2% hydrochloric acid, 1% hydrochloric acid, and 70% alcohol or what you call alcoholic HCl. We class parang familiar sa akin to. Ano yung 1% alcohol na yan? Ano yan? Decolorizer yan, 'di ba, class sa AFB stain. 'Di ba? Yun yung tinatawag na acid alcohol. Di ba, class? Oh, nakalimutan nyo na, class, ha? Kayo talaga, ha? <laughs> May staining pa naman kayo. Babalikan nyo din naman yun. Anyways, let's move on to how long how long tissue blocks should be soaked in perennial fluid. Um, tissue blocks should remain there 1 to 2 hours. Okay? If, the t- if it's not embedded, you can soak it there for 12 to 4 hours. 12 to 24 hours. Okay? So if it's embedded, naka naka ano na naka-expose na yung tissue doon sa bloke, 1 to 2 hours lang. Okay? Next. This is a tissue softener that needs to be used with extreme care as it makes specimen soapy and bubbly. Okay? Bumubula ang sample pag napa sobra. Okay? Moliflex. Okay? Moliflex is a surfactant. Kaya bumubula siya. Okay? Dissolving surfactant siya. Okay, para siyang sabon. Alright, now, malapit na tayo matapos sa decalcification, I think. Tama ba? Kasi parang mga ano lang yan, 100 slides lang ata yan eh. 450 slides, parang ganon. 
okay? Um, what to do uh, after decalcifying the sample? So, obviously, kakasabi ko lang kanina, huhugasan nyo siya with water to neutralize the acids. Okay? You wash out the sample to neutralize the acids with water in some cases. If an acid was used to decalcify a tissue, what is usually done? Neutralization. Okay? Neutralization is usually done. It's either through the use of what? Um, I think next slide na tayo. Parang napasobra ata ako ng ano. Na-excite ako mag-explain. Hindi ko na-realize yung ano natin. Eh, napasobra na pala. Okay? So, how long should the sample be soaked in water after decalcification? So, if a sample was uh, uh, decalcified in, ano, in... Oh, sorry. Napasobra nga ako. Balik tayo. Balik, balik, balik muna tayo. Ayan. ayan. Wash out sample. And then, yan. Napasobra nga ako. How long should samples be, ano na tayo? Nasaan na yung how long ngayon? Next slide tayo, Moyo. Ayan. Ayan. How long should samples be soaked after decalcification? If it's a small specimen, pretty minutes. If it's a large specimen, one hour to four hours. Just to neutralize the acids. Okay? If it's a strong acid naman, that which is the next slide. Okay? Um, we usually neutralize, we usually do neutralization. And to neutralize it, we use lithium uh, lithium carbonate or <coughs> 5 to 10% sodium carbonate. Okay? 2%, sorry, 2% lithium carbonate and 5 to 10% sodium carbonate. Okay? Next, another thing that you need to do if EDTA was used, if EDTA was used, how do we remove the decalcifying agent? We you we <coughs> sorry, we just add water. Ayan nga o oh, kaya nga nilagay ko yung picture niya eh, di ba? Drink your water. All right, drink your water class. Gana na. Ayaw ko sabihin yung ano ba kaman di monetize tayo. Okay? Pero alam niyo na ko ano ibig ko sabihin. Just add water. Okay? Di ba? Para na papangiti ko kayo. Binibigla ko kayo na mga may mga funny pala na mga ganyan dyan. Alright. Next. Let's move on to... Nakalimutan ko. Anong pangalan niya? Natutuwa ako sa kanya eh. Anong pangalan niya, class? TikToker ata yan or ano eh. Hindi ko maalala pangalan niya. Ah, si Mimiya. Oo nga pala. Lagi niya sinasabi, Mimiya. <laughs> di ba? Lagi siya gawa ganun. Yeah. Natutuwa ako sa kanya. Hindi ko siya kilala actually. Sa, ano, lagi ko lang napapanood yung videos niya. Anyways, let's move on to the next slide. Um, and the next, uh, yeah, that one. Um, tests to determine the completeness of decalcification. Okay? So, there are three things that you need to do. You can do physical tests, you can do chemical tests, or you can do radiologic tests. Kanina sinabi ko sa inyo yung isang common sense question. Diba? <laughs> ano yung common sense question sinabi ko? Physical test yun. That's a physical test. Yung to determine the completeness of um, of decalcification, when you don't have anything in the laboratory, or we don't have you don't have chemicals and other means to determine it, what do you do? You pinch it to see if it's soft. Kay kukurutin mo. <laughs> parang ano lang yan? Parang lasagna lang yan class. Okay. Yung ano ng lasagna. Yung kung al dente ba. Ganon. Kailangan mo lang, pa, kailangan mo lang pakiramdaman. Okay? So, we have uh, four physical methods. I think. That's the next one. Right? So, we have four physical methods to determine the completeness of decalcification. Um, we either touch it. You just poke it with your fingers. Um, you prick it with a dissecting needle. You probe it with the dissecting needle also, or you bend it if it's large bones. Okay? Parang Oreo. Parang ano lang siya. Instructions lang siya pa sa pagkain ng Oreo class, no? Twist, lick, dunk. Parang ganun. No? Pero ano, you can use one, you can use a lot. You can use you can use all of them if you want to. Okay? Pero we don't, uh, we don't recommend this because it is an occupational hazard. Okay? You're using acids, and acids produce fumes that could be an irritant, which could result to asthma, asthma attacks. Okay? I have a co-worker, she's allergic to, she's allergic to the fumes of, um, I think that was, I think it's one per, uh, of HCL. So every, uh, no, no, 
acid din yun eh. Ah, yung tetrafluoroacetic acid na ginagamit namin pang polish. Okay, so ganun. Anyways, let's move on to the next slide. Na-distract na naman ako. Um, advantage and disadvantage of radiographic analysis for the de uh, for the determination of sample. Syempre, pag social yung laboratory, mahal mahal kasi siya, isang disadvantage 'yun. 'Di ba? Lalo na kami ni Patrick, mag tsaka ni Segi, makakapat kakapatayo pa lang namin ng laboratory, 'di ba? So, wala kaming radiographic analysis, 'di ba? Imagine mo sa ang laboratory 'yun, yung merong X-ray, 'di ba? <laughs> okay? And then Um, it can be used on it cannot be used on samples fixed in uh, metals. Obviously, that's a, also a disadvantage. One of the advantages is that it's easy to do. You just take a picture. Okay, so let's see if I'm correct. I'm using my common sense. Yeah. So expensive, sha, and you can't use it on metals because metals metals will react. Uh, metal metals will form an opacity uh, when you when you pass X-ray through a sample. Okay, X-rays, and it's easy. Uh, and one of the advantages is that it's easy because it's like just like taking a photo. Okay, next slide. Ay tapos na. Hoy meron pa isa pa. Ayan chemical test. Chemical test naman tayo. The most common chemical test for the determination of the completeness of the decalcification process is calcium oxalate test. Okay, you use calcium oxalate. To precipitate the calcium ions, okay, based on the precipitation of calcium ions, okay. Next, the most uh, for most histopathology lab, what is the most popular tests to determine the completeness of decalcification? It's through chemical and it's using calcium oxalate tests. Why? Because it's less subjective and it's cheaper than radiography, okay. What do you mean? It's less subjective. Kasi hindi tayo magbe-base dun sa pakapakapa lang ng physical test, de ba? Eh malay ko malay ko kung may diabetic ne profit si ano si Mark Segi, de ba? Kasi namin siya remember kasi natin siya Mark, de ba? Kasi natin si Mark, de ba? Patrick. Okay, pa, sa kanya na tama yung ilalabas na ilalabas na yung ano ilalabas na yung yung sample sa decalcifying agent. Eh wala tayong ibang test. Na ano aside sa aside sa pag sa pakiramdam ni Mark Segi. Eh nung timeline mo taas blood sugar niya, nagkaroon siya ng diabetic, may diabetic, nagsasuffer siya ng diabetic nephropathy. Wala siyang pakiramdam sa daliri niya. Oh. Ay, di, ay matigas, ilubog pa natin. Ganun na mangyayari. So subjective siya. Kasi everything that you see, everything that you do especially with physical tests, it's subje uh, subjectivity has to be put in question. Okay? Kaya nga laging dinadaan sa competency tests yung mga staff dapat. Okay? And then we have what you call uh, because it's cheaper. So hindi mo kailangan bumili ng ano ng ng X-ray na machine para lang sa mga maliliit na piraso ng buto, 'di ba? Okay? Sayang lang. Next, we move papabonus na lang natin Patrick, 'di ba, doon sa mga ano, sa mga trabahador natin, 'di ba? pa Christmas bonus na lang natin yun kaysa pabili ng X-ray. Okay, now we have to um, note it, note the um, steps involved in the calcium oxalate test. So you have two things to remember when you're using when you're doing the calcium oxalate test. You neutralize it first and then you precipitate it. Okay, neutralizing using um, using an aliquot of um, of the decalcifying fluid from the container. And then you add uh, you add that to um, a tube of ammonium hydroxide until a neutral pH is is reached. Okay, so if it re reached an uh, um, um, a neutral pH, if precipitation occurs, the co the completeness of the decalcification process has occurred. Okay, because you form ammonium oxalate. Okay, ammonium oxalate. If it does not, it will become. It will still be cloudy. Okay. So let's. Uh, sorry. Um, when you form ammonium oxalate, I'm sorry. I was. I was wrong. If it forms a precipitate, it's still incomplete. Okay. If it turns milky, it's also incomplete. But 
I think that's the next slide, how to interpret the, uh, the oxalate test. Yeah. But if it's a clear solution, it means that the decalcification process is, is, <coughs> is complete. Okay? And I think you'll see it now on the next slide. Okay? Complete decalcification. Clear solution. Incomplete white precipitate or it's cloudy kasi nga binabalance mo yung pH with ammonium hydroxide so kung hindi siya balanced hindi siya magpo-form ng ay magpo-form siya ng precipitate or magiging cloudy siya kasi may calcium pa na lumulutang-lutang bali parang ang ginagawa mo binabalance mo yung reaction kaya ka mayroong litmus paper na katabi kasi tin or tinitest mo yung pH niya okay with the probe okay let's move on with practice slides I think this is the last part of our discussion. Practice slides tayo, class. All photos have been are credited from the BOTC Histotechnologist Self-Instructional Manual if you want to take the exam. And because Sir Marco told me that you will have pictures in your exams, kasi ganun na daw ang ginagawa ng TRC ngayon. I don't know why, kasi black and white pa rin daw. Um, <clears throat> I want you guys to um, uh, understand how to interpret or because one of your jobs if you want if you happen to happen to get hired as a histotechnologist is to be a quality co slide quality controller okay so before pa dumating kay pathologist yan dadaan muna sa quality controller okay so let's start with our first slide okay first slide here is there anything wrong with this slide class by the way we're using h and e here so, we're using an acid dye and we're using a basic dye, right? So, the cytoplasm is supposed to be acidophilic. Therefore, it will stain the cytoplasm. The neutral, uh, the, the neutral, not, not the neutral, the basic dye will go to the acids in the tissue. Therefore, it will go to the nucleus, okay? So is there anything wrong there? I can see everything perfectly. To me it's to me everything is perfect. This is a chunk of a tissue from the bone. Okay? Let's see if I'm correct. There's nothing wrong with that one. Nope. It's adequately decalcified after H and E. Okay? I'll show you guys what's uh, the wrong one. Okay? Next slide, please. Is there anything wrong in the sample there? Kitang-kita nyo ba ang pinagkaiba, class? Sino, sa, uh, sino makakasagot kung anong kakaiba dyan? Bone sample din yan from the same specimen, pero pero obviously may de, may, there's inadequate decalcification. Pero what makes it inadequately decalcified in our scientific eye, class? Sinong makakasagot sa akin? Pupoint out nyo lang kung anong kakaiba. Hindi nyo kailangan hawakan ang pointer. Descriptive lang tayo. Lilzo. Anong kakaiba, Lilzo? Playing for Mims. Wala, Lilzo. Nasaan na si Patrick? Patrick, sige. Si Patrick ang nagtaas ng kamay. Eh. Sige. Hoy! Hoy! Hindi yon Mali ang tinitingnan mo. Ano sinabi ko kanina? Diba pag maraming calcium, doon kakapit ang negative natin na acid. Diba? Saan dyan ang, saan dyan ang kakaiba? Hindi. Sige, sino mga kaano? Hindi nyo nakikita. Ang laki-laki class. Kayo talaga. <laughs> Kayo talaga. Ayan o. Oh. kita o. Oh. Oh, sige. Inietos ko sila eh. Sige na go. Hindi actually tama si Patrick. Wala namang problema. <laughs> Mas malayo lang yan. 10 times magnification lang yan. High level ano lang yan. Matikita kita mo nga. Makita mo ito. Nope. Nothing. It's also perfectly decalcified. But it's a... Tinaetos lang kita. Kinabahan ka ba? Okay. So pakita natin sa kanila kung ano talaga yung, dika, yung merong kakaiba. Alright. Ayan. Obviously may something ng kakaiba dyan. Ano kakaiba dyan, Renmar? Wow. 
Pagbulong sabihin wala kang nakikita. <laughs> Bubugbugin kita anak pag uwi mo sa bahay. <laughs> wala kang nakikita kayo ba? Tandaan nyo, H&E lang ang ginamit natin dyan na. Titignan lang natin na color sa H&E, dalawa lang dapat. May, da- may kakaiba dyan. Ano ang kakaiba rin, Mar? Try ka. Sige. Ha? Hoy! May kakaiba dyan, Arian. Ano kakaiba dyan? Pakita mo sa kanila ng ano yung original picture. Ayan. Oh, there's nothing wrong there, right? Pakita mo sa kanila ngayon yung ano, yung yung abnormal. Oh, anong additional color diyan? Arian. Hoy, wala pa tayo. Hoy, wala pa tayo sa distortion. O sige na, sasagutin ko na kayo. Siret na kayo, class. Meron tayong tinatawag na bone dust. Tingnan nyo, class. Kasi paano ko nasabi may bone dust? Pag H&E ang staining methodology natin, walang ibang color kayong titingnan kundi red at blue. Bakit may black ba? Diba? Calcium deposits yan. Okay? Calcium deposits yan, class. Okay? Bone dust ang tawag dyan. Okay? Tsaka makikita nyo, class, hindi decalcified talaga na tama kasi may mga buto-buto. Yes, tama si Renmar. Pero ang tinatanong dyan sa question na yan is, ano yung itim na yan? H&E stain is hematoxylin eucin. Dalawa lang ang color na titingnan nyo. Pink at saka bluish purple lang. Okay? Clear? Next. So, bone dust comes from incomplete decalcification of tiny bone fragments. Diba? Yun yung sinasabi ko kanina na Pag may mo, parang chicharon. <laughs> Na-stain yun dyan. Okay? Alright. Next tayo. Ayan. Huwag yung sabihin wala kayong nakita ang kakaiba dyan. Ayan. May kita-kita na yung kakaiba. Sasapakin na kayo sa muka. Ano yan? Ano yung kakaiba dyan? Lilzo. Ah, laki-laki na. Kakagatin na lang kayo. Tutuklawin na kayo. Ano yun? Ano yun? Ano yun nakikita ako? <laughs> Mahina ang ano nila sa ano, Sir Marco. Sa basic ano nila sa microscopy. Mahina ang skill sila sa basic microscopy. O sige. Anong kakaiba dyan? Katutuklawin ka, tutuklawin ka na Lilzo. Anong kakaiba? Patrick. Hoy, grabe kayo talaga. Talagang parang art interpretation ang ginagawa ninyo sa <laughs> microscopy natin. Yes, correct. Correct. Yes, very basic. Pakita mo nga ulit yung normal. Um, mo yung first slide. Mas maganda yung first slide eh. Yung una pa, yung una. Isa pa dyan. Yan. Diba? Nakita nyo, oh. Pink. Diba? Yung buto. Balik tayo sa baba. Anong isa? Yung pangalwa. Ayan. Kita niyo yung buto. Hindi, hindi. Yung isa, yung pangalwa, yung pangalwa. Hindi yan. Yung nandun sa taas. Ano ba yan? Ano nangyari kay Moyo? Wala naman dyan si Mark Segi, ha? Bakit? Wala naman nang didistract sa'yo, ha? Sino man nandyan sa bahay mo ngayon? <laughs> Wala naman si Mark Segi. Nandyan pa si Valiant. Kaya hindi po mapasok. Okay, ayan. Nakita niyo. Pink yung buto. Diba? Except for certain parts. Nakita nyo yung nasa gitna. Diba? Pink yung buto. Okay? And what what makes it what makes it more uh, what makes it more suspicious is at saka by the way pala Patrick, nakikita mo may crack din naman yan. <laughs> nakita mo, may crack din siya oh. Pero yung pinagkaiba, pink siya. Pink na pink. Okay? So yun yung pinagkaiba niya. Balik tayo ulit. Basic. Tama siya. Basic. So, ano ang problema niya? Kitang-kita mo yung bone fragment naman dyan. Yung literal na bone nandyan. <laughs> okay. Yung li- Kaya sabi ko, tutuklawin na kayo. Bakit tayo mo nga yung tamang sagot? Ah? Ayan. Next slide. 
Ayan, bone fragments are still present. Kita mo, kaya sabi ko tutuklawin na kayo. <laughs> By the way, this is again low power. Okay? Okay. So, <clears throat> next question na tatanungin natin is what does bone fragments indicate? So, pag may nakita tayong ano, bone fragments, anong problema? Ibig sabihin, there is a bluish coloration of the central, um, cent uh, uh, bluish central color color coloration indicative of the acidic, an acidic, uh, sorry, a basic phenomenon. Tama ba? I know, acidic phenomenon kasi kumakapit yung hematoxylin eh. Okay? So, under the, under the calcified yung samples natin. Pag ganyan. Okay? Next. Naku, patay tayo dyan. Kailangan ninyo makinig. Baka mamaya, ilabas po yan sa questions nyo. ba diba? Next. What is wrong here naman? Ayan naman. Uh, eto, kakaiba din to. Duplicate lang yan ng sample nung una, kanina, class. Sige, Liluzo. Ano naman nangyari dyan? Magtaas ka ng kamay, Liluzo. Ito naman. Oh, so ano nangyari? Describe mo sa akin kung ano nangyari sa cell. Sa cells. Ano na overcalcified? Na overdecalcified. Okay. All right. Okay, so tingnan nga natin kung tama si ano Lilzo. Yes, overdecalcified. Kasi tingnan niyo class, parang nabura na yung cellular detail. 'Di ba? Parang nabura na siya. Parang ang um, ano ko siya, interpretation ko sa kanya, if babalik tayo sa art app, is parang, alam niyo yung ginagamit ng mga artist, yung Crayola na pwedeng ismudge. Anong tawag dun? Oil pastel. Parang naging oil pastel yung texture niya, class. Kasi na, parang nabura siya eh, parang inismudge siya. Ganun yung itsura niya, class. Okay? So, even uh, by the way this is um by this is um 10,000 magnification uh, not 10,000 na 100 magn 100 times magnification okay uh, sorry high power magnification na siya so ano na dapat siya makikita na natin yung cellular details at that part pero wala ako makita eh di ba nucleus nga parang hindi ako sure eh kasi color, kasi color pink di ba okay let's go to the let's go to the next one Okay, so characteristics of over decalcified tissues, the distorted morphology, and um, uh, not in the end, I mean, we specifically the nuclear staining. Okay, so that is it for decalcification. Okay, that's it for decalcification. This will be added to your playlist class, by the way. Link will be provided after. Um, after a few short discussions. Charing. Okay? So, I'll give you guys like 10 minutes kasi ililipat ko lang sa dryer yung mga ano ko kasi ilalagay ko na siya sa bagahe ko. Um, I'll give you guys 10 minutes. No, let's go with uh, 15 minutes. Okay? Let's go with a 15 minute break. And then, pakisabi, pakisabihan ako kung ano, baka malate ako sa flight ko eh. Um... Sinong pwedeng mag-message? Ay, si Segi na lang. I-text mo ako, Mark Segi, kapag ka, ano na. Kapag ka, anong oras na sa Pilipinas? Um, pagka 4.15 na. Okay? Kasi magre-ready na ako nun para umalis. Okay? Pakisabi, pakisabihan ako ha, pagka ano, 4.15 na. Anyways, that's the end of our discussion for decalcification. We'll talk, we'll talk about, um, we'll talk about dehydration next include with uh, hopefully we get to um we get to discuss clearing also because that's important um anyways i'll see you guys in 15 minutes go have your break whatever you guys want
Okay. We're back. Back, back, 